Let's talk atmosphere. Here's the Earth. It's spinning on its axis, and there are weather patterns and atmospheric conditions. We are going to talk about some of that. First, let's talk about the relationship between the Earth and the Sun. There is a distribution of solar radiation that we need to talk about. So let me move my face so we can see all the words here. Okay. Heat distribution from the sun. Sunlight passes through more atmosphere at high latitudes than it does at low latitudes. Most solar heat is received in the tropics and less is in the temperate latitudes and even less at the poles. So if you look at the shape of these circles, think of solar radiation. The sun's over here is coming in. It's concentrated over a small area here. The, as we uh, go up in latitude, that shape gets more spread out, right? So the same width of a solar ray gets spread out over more area. It's going also a further distance through more atmosphere. So we have a decrease in solar radiation towards the poles. The image on the left shows similar um, ways we're spreading out that light. So here, if the light's pointing straight down, it's one unit of light straight concentrated on the surface. We move it over 45 degrees. That same beam is going to be dispersed over 1.4 or almost one and a half again size area of um, land and then here it if we move it 30 degrees then that same beam of light that was pointing in one spot at one unit is now spread out over two units so that is how we have different amounts of solar radiation okay so that uh that wait sorry <laughs> There is heat coming into the earth and there is heat radiated back out of the earth. So let's look at this image up here. Here's the big bright sun bringing in 100% of the rays to the earth. Some of that sunlight um, is going to, the radiation is going to be absorbed by atmospheric gases, whether it's water vapor or um, carbon dioxide or maybe the dust in the atmosphere. So in the upper atmosphere, some of it is absorbed. Then another bit is going to be absorbed by um, the clouds. And then what remains to get back to the earth is going to be absorbed by the oceans, most of it, and then somewhat the land. Not all 100% of that makes it into the atmosphere. Some of it is going to be um, bounced back out into space that's these orange rays so back scattered by air reflected and bounces off the clouds and then reflected by the water in the land surface instead of absorbed so we're losing some of that radiation back to the atmosphere there's um that's light we also have heat so over here on the right are the heat amounts that are going back out into the atmosphere so we're, we're radiating back out some heat um, back into the atmosphere okay so if you look at the balance here it's heat coming in and heat going going out and the earth's temperature is going to increase if the um, input coming in is greater than the output and if the temperature is going down, that's because the input is less than the output. Okay. All right. The Earth, let me get it back again, again, is going to experience different amounts of heat, right? Because the Earth is tilted and also uh, because Earth is tilted. So the um, amount of heat hitting the equator is going to be... Um, in that little dot and then spread out as we get further to the north. So there is a surplus of heat at the low latitudes. So low latitudes would be zero like the equator and then a deficit of heat at the polar region. So the poles have are cooler because they have the deficit and then the poles are warmer because they have a surplus. All right. So how do we balance out that heat? If we look at the Earth as just like a closed system, it's by wind. 
So wind is going to move heat around and also by currents. I realize my face is in front of this. Sorry, I'll go back over that in a second. Currents, ocean currents. We're going to talk about thermohaline circulation that is a deep ocean current and also surface currents and how those in the ocean move heat from the tropics to the latitudes, higher latitudes, and then how high latitude cold comes down towards the lower latitude. So here is um, heat transferred by air and water. It's moving it towards the poles and from zero, this is latitude along the bottom. Zero is the equator, 90 degrees north pole, 90 degrees to the south pole. Heat is moved um, by air, wind, and current water. There's a surplus of heat here in the around the equator and then at the poles a deficit it's cold okay all right what that gives us because of the differential heating is a, a wide range of um, surface temperatures so here's global surface temperatures and we're just looking at the ocean basins in this image around oh so this is in the image is in um celsius degrees so right around the equator, <clears throat> we're looking at the warmest 28, is that the highest? And then down to, I've got negative one here by Antarctica, so cold. 28 to negative one. This is um, during the Northern Hemisphere summertime. So summer is different depending on where you are. Let's look at what that looks like. Okay, so heating and cooling at the Earth's surface. Again, unequal radiation. Their annual cycles. So this graph is a year from a calendar year from New Year's Eve till New Year's Eve along the x-axis and the y-axis. Don't worry about the units, but it's how much solar radiation is coming in and um let's break it down so zero is the equator get my earth again zero is the equator put it like this that's not the way the earth is ornamented it's just like this there's the equator and that's going to get a pretty consistent amount of heat right so it's on the high end and it ranges a little bit that's just because we have the tilt of the earth okay we are at um about we are here in north <laughs> whoa i almost lost the earth uh, we are here in north carolina and we are between <laughs> uh like 30 and oh sorry here 30 and 45 degrees 45 degrees is about the border with canada we're um i think we're like around 35 degrees north 36 degrees north so calm down so um on here this is the 30 degree north line i'm gonna trace it out this green line the green um lines on here are north of the equator latitudes and the red lines are south of the equator so we are around this 30 degree north line a little uh a little lower than that or ye higher than that so a little in between the 60 and the 30 not quite halfway okay so we have a mild winter and then uh that goes into a hot summer and then back to a mild fall and then a um, mild cold winter okay so those that's what happens in the north and then the opposite is true in the southern hemisphere which are the red lines so at 30 degrees south um, i guess in the middle of march we have the same weather or temperature as solar radiation we'll just say as they do um, in 30 degrees south wherever that is okay <laughs>